11 ways in which you can get wealthy in Africa. That's what we're going to be looking at today. We're going to be looking at ways in which you can get wealthy. And I'm picking this from one of the top billionaires in Africa and from Kenya specifically, Chris Kirubi. Now, why do we look at these people in Kenya and in Africa? It's because these people made money in this environment. So why I sometimes say that we need to look both at the people who have made it already and who are in the process of making it because you get lessons from both sides. You see, some people say, oh, Chris Kirubi would have gone too far ahead for them to advise on the current environment. But the beauty of having me is that you get to understand the current environment, how everything is happening. Someone like me who is continuously and consistently building wealth as we speak and have very clear goals in what I want to achieve. And then we also use that knowledge to study other people who have built wealth completely and are billionaires probably. So Chris Kirby was one of the billionaires in Kenya. He owned lots and lots of assets, stocks and shares in different companies, uh, lots of real estate properties, uh, lots of different companies, limited companies, and he was basically involved in every sector. And there are lessons definitely to learn from these people. But there is an interview he did just before he died in 2020, and this interview was all about ways in which you can get wealthy in Africa. He said Kenya, but I'm going to make it Africa because, of course, everything happens within the environment. Remember this within context. And I like saying Africa because in this sense, you get the idea of environment and cultural context. You get the idea that there are certain things we have to do differently. And that's a fact that we must accept. There are things that as Africans we have to approach differently. So let's look at what Kirubi said about ways in which you can get wealthy in Africa. And I'm going to add my information because of my knowledge that I have. And of course, my experience too, as well. Sometimes when people are advising you, especially our parents or older people, their advice might be a bit too outdated. So we need to actually question. You have to have that open mindset to question stuff. The reason why people are not building wealth consistently right now is because we sometimes use very traditional methods that our parents used. It might have worked for them, might have not worked for them. They might have believed it. It might have been modeled in them, but they don't work in the current environment. They don't work for us. In the world of crypto and NFTs and forex trading and lots of um, things that you can basically do online and virtual assistance and every single thing is online those ideas might not work anymore and in a world whereby we're facing a recession like, like right now again you have to tweak things to work for you so what did chris kirubi say about getting wealthy in africa Anyway, guys, as usual here at Case Money Matters, talk about the money mindset, how to make that money, how to enjoy that money, how to manage that money, how to invest that money, and how to assure yourself of a lifetime of income, basically financial freedom. So let's dive in. Number one thing that you need to get wealthy is purpose. Now, this is a very important one. I always tell people when I'm coaching them that, you know what, you have to have clear goals. You have to have clear objectives. You can't just be shooting in the dark. Having a purpose of what you want to achieve, where you want to go to, where you want to be in number of years, in specific terms will help you achieve those goals much faster and more efficiently. Rather than just being there and doing everything and anything. This is a problem that we suffer from. Personally, I have actually struggled or uh, grappled with this particular issue whereby I sometimes take too much on my plate that I need to do so many things to achieve my goals. But that's not it. So having grown and become wiser and invested, I realized you have to focus on certain things. You have to have a very clear purpose on where you want to go, set clear goals and work on them. That will help you achieve your goals much faster and more efficiently without so much hassle. So don't try to do everything. Focus on some particular areas and go for them. So purpose is number one. Then of course we have planning. Most people say that poor planning is basically you preparing to fail. So if you don't plan properly, you are preparing to fail. Planning is important. And when it comes to building wealth, you need to plan your finances. You need to plan your money. You need to plan how you're going to get the cash flow. You need to plan how you're going to invest that money. So you must have a clear plan of direction. It's basically knowing that this is the, my destination. So you have a purpose. This is your destination. is the purpose. And you must now have a map to take you to that destination. And that's where planning comes in. You have to be prepared of what it involves to get to that goal. Because sometimes it's not just as easy as getting to it in a day or two. It requires some planning and steps that you want to take for you to get there. Then, of course, assessments. Now, this is a very important part. For me personally, every single month, I make sure I check my finances, I check my investments, I check where I am in terms of what I'm doing. You know, this continuous assessment and analysis is quite important if you're building wealth because you want to know where you are financially. You want to know 
when, when you wake up or when when the new month comes like right now in november you want to know okay what did you do different last month did you actually invest did you actually get any increase in your network did your situation change in any way even if by just one thousand Kenyan shillings and did you grow any skills did you invest in yourself did you buy something new that could help you improve your life did you buy an asset so you have to continuously assess whatever it is you are doing if you're in business you have to look at the business conditions is it doing well is it making profit how is the revenue you have to look at the business environment and what is changing in it now the analysis helps in many ways it helps in understanding where you are because if you do not know where you are standing at the moment it's very difficult to actually know where you want to go to or where you're going to so always analyze assess and get to know where you are when i'm doing finance coaching with people we have what we call financial health assessment it's basically trying to understand where you are understanding where you come from and where you are and where you're going that way you get to understand way more than just okay i want to achieve one two three but you don't have any really uh, understanding of your current environment your current standing with regards to whatever you want to achieve then we have patience now a lot of young people lack patience nowadays everyone wants to make money fast as soon as possible you know and that's just not gonna cut it you're gonna get into funny deals you're gonna lose lots of money or you're gonna get killed we've seen this happen all the time a lot of africans do not have that patience to actually just build wealth you need patience to build wealth. Sometimes, of course, you have, you have to, you know, do some things much faster. You have to be more proactive. You have to try to achieve your goals in a faster way. But it doesn't mean you go for deals that are get-rich-quick schemes because they will just interfere with your process of building wealth. You have to be patient in terms of trying to get your returns. The reason why we jump from one thing to another is because we're trying to get quick money. And it's never there. It doesn't happen. If it's there, it's always the wrong way. And that way, you get to have really bad consequences sometimes if you follow those paths. So patience is something we don't have. And that's why when you tell young people, hey, look at the long-term horizon, look at 10 years, look at five years from now, look at six years from now, they're like, okay, I can. That's them too far. I'm not going to look at that far. But the reason is they don't have that mindset to actually far from that far away because they lack the patience. So patience when you're building something is important. You can only stay along enough to see the results of what you're building if you're patient. Then I like this one, rewards. You have to reward yourself. This is a very important one. Nobody claps for you in this life. People want to see results. Whatever you are doing, people don't care. Whatever you're doing on the background, nobody cares. Like when I'm doing these videos and I'm editing them and doing everything, nobody cares what I'm doing. All they want to see is the result, what is posted, okay? So people want to see the result of what you're doing. They don't care about the other stuff you're doing around. You need to reward yourself. You need to motivate yourself. You need to clap for yourself. You need to encourage yourself. You are your biggest fan. If you're not your biggest fan, you won't make it. So make sure you consistently reward yourself and push yourself to achieve whatever milestone you want to achieve. So achieve one milestone, reward yourself. Sometimes, for example, when I'm reading or doing a new course that's very technical, what I do is finish one chapter, do some push-ups, do something interesting, go and make some, myself a nice meal. That's the kind of thing I, I do for myself. I travel sometimes when I do something and achieve certain goals. I say, you know what, if I achieve this goal by this time, what I'm going to do, I'm going to travel to a new country. That's how I reward myself. And I've done that for so long. I always give myself a target, achieve it, then say, you know what, when I get that, to that place, what I'm going to do is reward myself with something interesting. Traveling is one of them. So yes, going to a restaurant is another. Uh, meeting someone interesting is another thing. You know, doing an exercise that you love is another thing. Getting a drive or whatever, taking a break, reward yourself to motivate yourself continuously. Then the next one is, of course, something I talk about every single day is budget, budget, budget. Make sure you budget. Make sure you have a financial plan. If you do not have a financial plan, you're going to get messed up because you need to understand your finances. You need to understand the, uh, the cash flow. It's the inflow, the outflow, and the investments that you have and everything else. So if you don't understand that, that kind of channel and that funnel that money comes through and gets out, it becomes very difficult to actually plan your finances properly. So you must have a budget. And a budget here doesn't mean that now you have to track every, sh every shilling or every coin. No. It just means you need to understand your, basically your structure in this essence, the structure of your money and where the big expenses are. Because you don't even need to write down to know where your big expenses are. And sometimes I tell people, all you need to do is take money from investment. If you don't want to do a budget, take your investment money every month and then survive with what you're left with. Whether it's enough or not, that's your business. Because some people don't want to budget and write stuff down. They hate it. So I give you a good solution. Just tell yourself every single month, I'm going to take this amount of money to invest. Despite what is left, I'm going to survive. If you need to make more money, make more money. So a budget or financial planning is a must if you want to have a good financial journey. Then, of course, it talks about integrity. It's just basically being true to yourself, being true to your goals, and being having some kind of integrity in everything that you do. Basically, honesty and stuff like that. You have to be someone who is believable, trustable by other people, and you are doing things the right way. Then it says you should value your time. Always value your time. 
make sure that you know exactly what you need to be doing at a particular time. Don't spend time in things that don't actually add value to your life. Don't spend time with people that don't add value to your life. You have to know that your time is valuable. Don't work for someone who is not rewarding you accordingly or rewarding you according to your, to your worth. So you have to value your time. Time is extremely important, especially when it comes to building wealth. Time is the most important commodity. Then finally, last but not least, is creating a balance. You have to create a balance between work life, career life, and personal life. This is something that most people don't know how to do. Have a balance in your life. Make sure that you can actually see or make sure that the same time or the same word you give to other things like money, the same word to give other things like relationships, for example, your family, for example, you have to have that clear balance of the things you're doing. Because sometimes when you get too involved in something, you actually, it becomes more of like, um, how would I say it? You start losing in the process of you thinking that you're actually making something. Your focus on money can actually make you lose some very important aspects of your life. You have to be in a position to look at things and decide not just based on money based on the value they provide in your life and that will give you the balance so look at things not from the perspective of only cash or only wealth building but also things like relationships for example your family for example uh resting and having fun and enjoying the process because then the other issue is that you can also suffer burnout if you are only focused on working all the time and not taking a break you burn out after a while and then you just have no motivation to go on so you must create that balance for you to actually cultivate the patience and do it long term so that you don't have to give up so fast because you're just too tired or too burnt out or too bored with it some people like me i get bored easily so i don't want to go too involved in something i don't have any break or any balance and then i'm like no i don't, I don't want to do this anymore and of course on top of it is about acknowledging your responsibilities you are responsible for where you are financially you are responsible for your life you are responsible for everything that happens in, in in your life and you're responsible for the things you're doing your goal your purpose your objectives you are responsible so make sure that you accept that responsibility and make sure that you achieve whatever it is you want to achieve through that i hope this has been helpful guys remember at kent's money matters we give you coaching on all these things mentioned but this is a very good way to start if you want to actually build wealth these are some of the qualities you must you must try to have i know you might not be perfect but you have to consciously and i would say with very so much attention go and try to cultivate these things so guys i hope that's been helpful guys see you on our next video i'm out